We are here after the first round of the A Open of the 50th International Dortmund Chess Days and uh, I'm here with top-seeded player Matthias Blubaum who won his first round game. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, how was the feeling to play on the stage? Are you still a bit nervous when you play on stage like that? I mean, I played on the stage last year already, so it, I wasn't too nervous. But of course, like the first round, you're always a bit nervous because you never know how it's going. And so, yeah. And which was your last tournament before Dortmund? Uh, I played in the French League. It was like two and a half weeks ago, maybe. Okay, okay. So, about a fresh tournament, a new tournament, mm. and uh, how was the game going for you? At the right pieces today? Yeah, I think I was better out of the opening. I mean, of course, both. I mean, my opponent and I didn't have any time to prepare because the pairings are made like a few minutes before the yeah, start of the round. Time. So I just played what I usually play in the opening and I think I got an edge. But at some point uh, it wasn't really much and I was a bit worried that he might hold a draw. But okay, somehow I managed to, tr to trick him when he was in time trouble. Okay. I, I remember the opening because uh, I remember that you played last year a blitz game and you also yeah. played uh, against the Nimsu Indian this Bishop D2. Yeah. yeah, in blitz and rapid I basically always play this Bishop D2, but in classical I can't play too much because opponents can prepare. But today I thought, okay, I can okay. give it a try. What's the, what's the idea of the opening of this Bishop D2? Because that's I mean, not it's the main line. It's just a very solid line. I mean, obviously the one idea is that you can take back on C3 with the Bishop, as stupid as it looks. And I mean, it looks it looks very harmless for white, but I mean, sometimes the positions are not so easy to play for black. So you want to get the bishop pair and... Yeah, of course, like Nimso Indian, you always want to get the bishop pair, but like... Without getting the double pawn. Exactly. Yeah. So we think we don't have to go through all the mm -hmm. 60 moves, but maybe yeah. you can just explain which were the... Yeah. yeah, he played this bishop d6, which is a very rare move, I think. And knight, okay, knight d5 is obviously the main choice. And then c5. It's not such a bad line for black actually, but basically nobody plays it, takes okay. takes. Bishop c3 and I think he's supposed to go d4 here, but maybe I misremembered. Mm -hmm. There were some crazy lines with d4, knight f takes d4 and some some madness like takes queen d4, bishop d7 I think, bish uh, queen d8, bishop d8 and then bishop b4 and you get the rook on f8 and nah, the no, c8 is hanging. Bishop is hanging. Exactly, okay. that's the point. So you get the rook on f8 and you have like... Um, rook against two pieces, but you also have two pawns. It's basically an unclear position, I think. Your grandmaster saw no, so much stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so he went bishop e6, yeah. which looks normal to my eyes. Of course, it looks normal. Yeah, I mean, so I, th I thought I have to take on f6 and c5. It's like, has to be the main point of the position. So queen a5 check looks very so natural. One one pawn, but black. But he gets one pawn back, yeah. Back on but his queen on a2 is a bit misplaced. Maybe here I should find something better than knight c3, knight d1, I'm not sure. It's okay. not so easy to find something I didn't. Because, I mean, here, like, the idea is rook a5, queen b1, bishop d3 is winning the queen if mm -hmm. he doesn't do anything special, but of course he played a5 to prevent rook a5. Mm -hmm. And yeah, here I just didn't didn't find anything special. So, but but you thought you were in the edge, you said, because of the yeah. isolated pawn. I mean, I can or... never be worse as white, of course, but obviously I want to win the first game. So, I mean, little edge is nice, but of course you still have to win the game. So, mm -hmm. so okay, at some point I just thought, okay, let's play bishop e2 in castle. And knight e7, rook b5, and he's just in time with rook c8 to get the queen out. Because now he gets like knight e4, queen c1, so he's just mm -hmm. less in time to, to get it out. Um... Yeah, and I think after queen c1 I had to go for this endgame, which is a bit better. And okay, he played rook b8. Obviously, it's also possible to take on d4 and play knight f6, which is also like very, very safe or oh, basically solid for black. I mean, probably I have to go bishop f3 and maybe he goes king f8 and I can take everything on d5 and rook b8, rook a5, rook b2, and I think so it should be a draw. Okay, we uh, end in a rook endgame. Yeah, so I mean, that's just one where you are pawn up, but, but it should should be a technical draw. But so, I think also many games will be... Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, the d-pawn is probably even better than the a-pawn because you can bring your king to the d-pawn and protect it. Okay, okay. so no fun for black, so he went for something else. Exactly. Rook B8. Rook B8. But what was his mistake? That he is landing in some end games with a pawn, pawn down? Yeah, I mean, he was okay. worse out of the opening. Okay, so the opening choice was not that great. I guess, yeah. At least I'm um, always slightly better. And okay, Rook B8, and I played this Knight D5, which I was regretting a lot after I played it. Because here, maybe he can just play Bishop D4, and maybe it's just a draw. I have to take back on D4, because otherwise my Knight on D5 is dropping. Okay, yeah. And Rook B5, yeah. Bishop B5. Bishop d5, bishop d7, and this might just be a draw, to be honest. King f8 and the king comes to d6, and if I don't find some special way to break through, it's probably just a fortress. 
that looks more more solid than the rook end game. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like here, if I if there's no way to break through, he can't even do anything wrong. It's just a dead draw immediately. So, hmm? I mean, I, I guess it's just a draw. So I was very happy when he didn't play his. Okay, if that was a chance for him to. Yeah, exactly. It, maybe and because he played this and then rook b2 and I play g3 and okay, I win this a5 pawn and then I have four against three and I can basically play forever. Okay, because both pieces are hanging and exactly. then you were a pawn up and these end games, you just just win against <laughs> lower rated players or? I mean, it's it's just so much more fun to play as white and it's it's not like there's a very straightforward black with a uh, way for black to make a draw. So it's always unpleasant to defend. And of course, if you're a stronger player, you have good chances to win, I guess, usually. Okay. But still, I mean, of course, yeah, I, I had to win somehow. Um, but also he was in deep time trouble here, so I just played some moves to try and trick him. Um, yeah, and here after 95, f6 is just a, basically a blunder, I think. So I, I thought what he have to, has to do is bishop f6 and then bishop c4, bishop e5, rook e5, but it also looks really bad because the knight on c3 is, is okay, stupid. Because he had text his, his, his pawn on x7, so he has to give up. Yeah, sure. I, th I thought maybe this and rook d7, but the knight is bad. And even if the knight is good, I mean, like this four against three with bishop against knight, I will play forever. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't too unhappy anymore. And his mistake? I yeah, he did played not f6 in time trouble. Okay. So bishop c4 check. Both pieces are hanging, we have to give the check. Yeah, king g7. And then I have rook a7. I maybe he blundered that. Like maybe he thought I have to move the knight, but after rook a7, he cannot take on e5 because I take on e7 and also win the e5 pawn. Like king f6, rook e6 check. King f5 and g4 check just to be in g4 and rook e5. Okay, I think it's just important. Yeah. yeah. And also in the game, he was losing another pawn. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. He played king f8, but now knight c6 and. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And that's too much. Yeah. King f8. Yeah. Some, I mean, yeah, king f8 and knight c6. And I think that's basically the end of the game because. I mean, I have a choice if I take, want to take on h7 or want to take the pawn on f6. Maybe something else is technically yeah. faster, but I think it's always just completely winning with two connected fast pawns up. I oh. mean, not fast, but... But but very solid win. I mean, okay, yeah. I had maybe some chess to chunks to, to draw it, but mm. that's normal in chess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, all in all, it was a, I guess it was a decent game, even though I, may, I might have blundered into this draw and bishop end game. So yeah. if that is a draw, of course, it's not great, okay. but yeah. So tomorrow with Black, uh, we think uh, again on board one. What's what's your goal for the tournament? I mean, I want to play well, and I mean, I'm the top seed, so if I want to play well, I'm obviously I obviously have to play for first place. That's basically just by definition. So of course that's the goal. But like the that I wanted to hear. Yeah, <laughs> but okay, like with this accelerated Swiss, the pairings are quite strong. So I actually don't know who I will get tomorrow, like from strength for us. So it probably won't be easy. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Matthias, for taking the time and good luck tomorrow. Sure. Thanks.